More and more people travelled on the Fat Controllers Railway. More and more ships came to the harbours. Everyone had to work very hard indeed. The trucks complained bitterly. But then trucks always do, and no one takes much notice. Dirty trucks, dirty sidings, ugh, put in James. Silence, ordered a well-known voice. Let me tell you, the engine for goods work will arrive from Scotland tomorrow. The news was received with exclamation. The fat controller stared. Did you say two engines, Inspector? Yes, sir. Then send the other back at once. Certainly, sir. But which? The fat controller stared again. Engines have numbers, Inspector? He explained patiently. We bought number 57646. Send the other one back. Quite so, sir. But there is a difficulty. What do you mean? The two engines are exactly alike, sir, and have no numbers. They say they lost them on the way. The fat controller seized his hat. We'll soon settle that nonsense, he said grimly. The two engines greeted him cheerfully. I hear you've lost your numbers, he said. How did that happen? The mourner slowly slip it off, sir. You can know it is, the engines spoke in chorus. I know. Accidentally on purpose. The twins looked pained. Sir, you wouldn't be thinking we lost them on purpose. I'm not so sure, said the fat controller. One of you is playing truant. I shall find him out and send him home. Inspector, he ordered, give these engines numbers and set them to work. He walked sternly away. Soon workmen came to give the twins their numbers. Donald was nine and Douglas ten. When the men went away, they were left alone in the shed. You may have noticed, Dougie, that the young painters forgot something. What did they forget? They painted broad new numbers on our tenders, but they put none on us. Donald winked broadly at his twin. You mean, grinned Douglas, that we can... Just that, chuckled Donald. Who would you wish? Here's the inspector. No nine and ten, smiled the inspector. Here's Duck. He'll show you round before you start work. The twins enjoyed themselves and were soon friends with Duck. They didn't mind what they did. They tackled goods trains and coaches easily. For once the twins had shunted them, trucks knew better than to try any tricks. We like it fine here, said Donald. That's good, smiled Duck. But take my tip. Watch out for Gordon, Henry and James. They're sure to try some nonsense. Get a flash yourself, chuckled Douglas. We'll soon settle them. Donald and Douglas had deep-toned whistles. They sound like buses, said Gordon. Or ships, sniggered Henry. Tugboat Annie, laughed Gordon. Ha, ha, ha. Donald and Douglas cruised quietly up. You wouldn't they be making fun of us, would you now? Asked Donald. Gordon and Henry jumped. They glanced nervously from side to side. Uh, no, said Gordon. No, 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 certainly not, said Henry. That's fine, said Douglas. No, just mind the both of you and keep it that way. That was the way Gordon and Henry kept it. Every day, punctually at 3.30, Gordon steams in with the express. There is also a special coach for passengers travelling to places on Thomas's branch line. When the other coaches are taken away empty, engines have to remember to shunt the special coach to the bay platform. It doesn't wait there long. Thomas, with Annie and Clarabel, comes hurrying from the junction to fetch it. Thomas is very proud of his special coach. One afternoon, Douglas helped duck in the yard, while Donald waited to take a good strain to the other end of the line. As Duck was busy arranging Donald's trucks, Douglas offered to take away Gordon's coaches. Douglas was enjoying himself when an awful thought struck him. I hope the fat controller doesn't find out I shouldn't be here. I couldn't abide going back. He worried so much over this that he forgot about Thomas's special coach. He pushed it with the others into the carriage siding. 
then ambled along to join Donald at the water column. As he went, Thomas scampered by, whistling cheerfully. Soon Thomas came fussing. Where's my coach? Coach? asked Donald. What coach? My special coach that Gordon brings for me. It's gone. I must find it. He bustled away. Lost six, said Douglas. I'm more than stowed the special coach with the others. Do you see that? exclaimed Donald's driver. A mob of angry passengers erupted from the siding. They're complaining to the fat controller. He'll be coming here next. Now listen, said Douglas's driver. We'll change tenders. Then a wire with ye, Donald, and take yon goods. Dinner flash about us. Quick now, do as I say. The fat controller and three passengers walked towards them. But Donald, with Douglas's tender, number ten, was out and away with the goods before they came near. Douglas and his driver waited with innocent expressions. Ah, said the fat controller, number nine. And why have you not taken the goods? May a tender is a wire, sir. The driver showed him the tender, still uncoupled. I see. Some defect, no doubt. Tell me, why did number ten leave so quickly? Maybe, sir, put in Douglas. He saw you had come in and thought he was late. Ah, said the fat controller. He turned to the passengers. Here, gentlemen, are the facts. Number ten has been shunting the yard. Your coach disappeared. We investigate. Number ten... Um, disappears too. You, you can draw your conclusions. Please accept my apologies. The matter will be investigated. Good afternoon, gentlemen. The fat controller watched them till they climbed the station ramp. His shoulders twitched. He wiped his eyes. Douglas wondered if he was crying. He wasn't. He swung round suddenly. Douglas, he rapped. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender? <laughs> <laughs>